Hello and welcome back to our channel, where we turn complex contract clauses into easy to understand concepts. If you're new here, a very warm welcome to you. And to our returning viewers, it's great to have you back with us. Today, we're embarking on a fascinating journey through the world of contract management. We'll be diving deep into the intricacies of Clause 14.12, often referred to as Discharge, from the Fittick Yellow Book. This clause plays a pivotal role in the final settlement of contracts, and understanding it can make a significant difference in how you handle contract closures. We know that dealing with contract clauses can sometimes feel like navigating a labyrinth. That's why we're here to guide you through, breaking down complex terminology and processes into clear, manageable insights. But before we start unraveling the mysteries of Clause 14.12, I have a small favor to ask. If you find value in our content, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. Your support is what enables us to continue providing this kind of educational content. Plus, it ensures you won't miss out on any of our future videos. Ready to dive into the world of Clause 14.12 and demystify its role in contract management? Let's get started and uncover how this clause shapes the final settlement process in contracts. Clause 14.12 plays a pivotal role in contract closure, especially when it comes to financial settlements. Let's break it down in a way that's easy to understand. First up, the submission of discharge. When a contractor is wrapping up their work, they submit what's known as the final statement. But that's not all, they also need to submit a written discharge. This discharge is essentially a confirmation. It states that the amount mentioned in the final statement is the full and final settlement of all money owed to the contractor under the contract. It's a key step in ensuring there are no loose ends financially. Moving to the second part, the effectiveness of discharge. This is where things get a bit more specific. The discharge can state that it becomes effective under certain conditions. For instance, it may specify that the discharge is effective only when the contractor has received both the performance security and the outstanding balance. This means the discharge isn't just a statement, it's contingent on these final payments or actions. So, why is understanding Clause 14.12 important? It's all about clarity and closure in financial dealings within a contract. Ensuring that both parties acknowledge the final settlement avoids future disputes and ensures a clean, clear-cut end to the contract. Remember, while this clause provides a framework, the specifics can vary based on the contract's nature and the parties involved. Always read and understand the nuances in your contract. But let's delve deeper into the purpose and implications of Clause 14.12. Understanding why this clause is included and what it signifies can make a world of difference in how you handle contract closures. At its core, Clause 14.12 is more than just a procedural step. It's a formal mechanism to ensure that all financial obligations between the contractor and the employer are completely settled at the end of a contract. This clause is all about clarity and assurance. By providing a clear, legally binding declaration, Clause 14.12 confirms that all monetary dues under the contract have been fully resolved. It's not just about the numbers, it's about legal certainty and peace of mind for both parties. Let's talk about the implications. First, the finality of payment. Once the discharge is submitted and becomes effective, the contractor cannot make any further financial claims related to the contract. This marks the end of all financial dealings under that specific contract. Next, legal closure. This clause acts as a formal acknowledgement from the contractor that they have no outstanding financial claims against the employer. It's a crucial step to prevent future disputes and legal issues. Lastly, the conditional effectiveness. It's important to note that the effectiveness of this discharge often hinges on certain conditions like the contractor receiving all due payments, including the return of performance security. This conditionality serves as a safety net, ensuring that the contractor doesn't prematurely waive their rights to any unpaid dues. 
It balances the interests of both the contractor and the employer, paving the way for a fair and conclusive end to the contract. Remember, while Clause 14.12 offers a standardized approach, the specifics can vary based on your contract's unique terms. Always consult with a legal expert to understand how this clause applies in your context. Now that we've understood the purpose and implications of Clause 14.12, let's zero in on its primary aspects and how it's utilized in practical scenarios. The first aspect to consider is the written discharge. This isn't just any document, it's a formal declaration confirming that all financial dues between the contractor and the employer have been settled. It's the cornerstone of Clause 14.12. Next, the inclusion of the final statement. The discharge isn't submitted in isolation. It should always accompany the final statement, which is a summary of all financial transactions undertaken during the contract. This pairing is critical for comprehensive closure. And we can't overlook conditionality. The discharge often states that its effectiveness is contingent on certain conditions, primarily, the receipt of performance security and the outstanding balance. This ensures that the contractor's rights are protected until all dues are cleared. Moving on to the uses of Clause 14.12, the first one is project closure. This clause is a staple at the final stage of a project, serving as a formal mechanism to close all financial dealings. It's a definitive end to the project's financial chapter. Then, dispute avoidance. By clearly stating the settlement of all dues, this clause plays a pivotal role in preventing future financial disputes. It's about ensuring both parties are on the same page, with no room for ambiguity. Lastly, record keeping. The written discharge and accompanying final statement become important documents for financial and legal record keeping. They serve as a reference point for both parties, offering proof of settlement should any questions arise in the future. As we continue to navigate through the complexities of contract management, understanding these aspects and uses of Clause 14.12 becomes vital. It's not just about adhering to contractual obligations, but also about ensuring a smooth, dispute-free conclusion to projects. Understanding Clause 14.12 in isolation is insightful, but to fully grasp its importance, we need to look at how it interacts with other clauses in the contract. These interactions are key to a holistic understanding of contract closure. First, let's consider its interaction with Clause 14.11 which deals with the application for the final payment certificate. Here, Clause 14.12 and 14.11 share a critical effect. The contractor's application for the final payment certificate under Clause 14.11 includes the discharge provided in Clause 14.12. This discharge confirms that the final statement represents full settlement of all dues. It's like a conclusive handshake between these two clauses. Next up, the interaction with Clause 14.13, the issue of the final payment certificate. The engineer's role in issuing this certificate is contingent upon receiving the final statement and written discharge as outlined in Clause 14.12. This ensures a comprehensive and final resolution of payments. Another crucial interaction is with Clause 4.2 regarding performance security. Here, the effectiveness of the discharge under Clause 14.12 may be linked to the contractor receiving the performance security back. It's a vital connection that ties financial closure to the return of this security. Then there's the interaction with Clause 14.10, the statement at completion. This clause involves the initial financial reporting which precedes the final statement in Clause 14.12. It's a step-by-step -step process that methodically leads to financial discharge. Finally, let's talk about the general impact on contract administration. The requirement for a written discharge in Clause 14.12 is more than a procedural formality. It marks a clear endpoint to all financial obligations, significantly reducing the risk of future disputes. 
these interactions highlight the interconnected nature of contract clauses. Clause 14.12 doesn't exist in a vacuum, it's a pivotal piece in the larger puzzle of contract administration, ensuring a seamless and dispute-free closure. While the interplay between Clause 14.12 and other contract clauses is crucial, it's equally important to understand the key considerations when employing this clause. Let's dive into these essential points to ensure a smooth discharge process. First and foremost is the final settlement confirmation. It's imperative that the written discharge explicitly states that the final statement covers the full and final settlement of all monetary dues under the contract. Clarity here is non-negotiable. Next, the conditional effectiveness. Remember, the discharge can be conditional, often depending on whether the contractor has received the performance security and the outstanding balance. This detail is crucial for protecting all parties' interests. Another critical factor is the timing of submission. The discharge should be submitted alongside the final statement. This timing aligns with the contract's closure process and ensures procedural accuracy. It's also vital to understand the legal binding nature of the discharge. Once submitted and effective, it legally precludes any further financial claims related to the contract. It's not just paperwork, it's a binding declaration. Let's talk about its link with the final payment certificate. The discharge isn't just a standalone document, it's integral to obtaining the final payment certificate as per Clause 14.13. Its submission is a key step for the engineer to issue this certificate. Comprehensive coverage is another key point. The discharge should cover all financial aspects of the contract. This comprehensiveness is critical to ensure that no area is left open to future disputes. Documentation and record keeping are indispensable. Keep thorough records of the discharge document and its submission. These records serve as crucial evidence in confirming the settlement of all contract-related financial obligations. Clear communication is essential. Ensure all parties involved, especially the engineer and the employer, are well informed about the submission and effectiveness of the discharge. Miscommunication can lead to unnecessary complications. Review and compliance cannot be overlooked. Prior to submission, review the discharge document thoroughly to ensure it complies with the contract terms and legal requirements. This step safeguards against potential legal challenges. Finally, acknowledgement of receipts. Confirm that all due payments, including the return of performance security, have been received before declaring the discharge effective. This acknowledgement is crucial for a valid discharge. By keeping these key points in mind, you can effectively navigate Clause 14.12 to achieve a clear, compliant, and conclusive financial closure in your contracts. Having covered the key points for employing Clause 14.12, let's visualize this process with a detailed flowchart. Understanding each step sequentially will give you a clearer picture of how to navigate this clause effectively. Our starting point is the project nearing completion. This is where the wheels are set in motion for the discharge process. It's a signal that it's time to wrap up the financial aspects of the project. Next up, prepare the final statement. Here, the contractor compiles a comprehensive summary of all financial transactions and dues under the contract. This statement lays the groundwork for what's to come. Then, draft the written discharge. This document is crucial. It confirms that the final statement represents the full and final settlement of all monetary dues. It's the heart of Clause 14.12. Now comes the review of the discharge for compliance. It's essential to ensure that the discharge document adheres to the contract terms and meets all legal requirements. This step is about due diligence and accuracy. Subsequently, the final statement and discharge are submitted. This typically involves sending these documents to the engineer or the employer as part of the contract closure process. It's a formal submission, marking a significant milestone. After submission, confirm the receipt of performance security. This step often determines the effectiveness of the discharge. 
the contractor must verify that they have received the performance security back. Quali important is to verify the receipt of the outstanding balance. The contractor needs to ensure that all the amounts stated in the final statement have been received. It's about tying up all the financial loose ends. Then, activate the discharge. This is where the discharge officially becomes effective, confirming the settlement of all financial obligations under the contract. It's a definitive financial closure. Following this, we see the issue of the final payment certificate, as per Clause 14.13. The engineer issues this certificate, recognizing the completion of the financial transactions, as per the submitted discharge. And finally, we reach the end of the process. All financial obligations under the contract are settled. This marks the financial closure of the project, a key milestone for both the contractor and the employer. Each step in this flowchart is integral to the successful application of Clause 14.12. By following this process, parties in a contract can ensure a smooth and dispute-free financial closure. Building on our flowchart, let's walk through the final stages of the contract's financial settlement process. This part of the process is critical in ensuring a clean and clear end to the contract. The journey begins with the start of the final stage of the contract. This is a pivotal moment, signaling that it's time to wrap up all financial aspects and prepare for closure. At this stage, we encounter Clause 14.12, where the contractor submits the written discharge. This document is a declaration from the contractor that the final statement represents the full and final settlement of all dues. Then comes a crucial check. Does the discharge confirm full and final settlement? If yes, the process moves smoothly to Clause 14.13. If not, it's time to loop back and resolve any discrepancies before proceeding. Accuracy here is key. Next, under Clause 14.13, the engineer issues the final payment certificate. This step is contingent on the confirmation of the discharge. This certificate quantifies the final amount due, taking into account all previous payments and credits. The final payment certificate is more than a document, it's the financial summary of the project. It outlines the final amount owed by either party and is pivotal in the closure process. Following this, Clause 14.14 comes into play, cessation of the employer's liability. This crucial step implies that, post-issuance of the final payment certificate, the employer's financial liability is significantly limited. Exceptions include indemnification, fraud, or misconduct. The limitation of liability is a vital aspect. It underscores the boundaries of the employer's financial responsibilities post-contract, except for specific exclusions. It's a safeguard for both parties. We then reach the phase marking the end of contractual financial obligations. This signifies the completion of all financial responsibilities under the contract, a significant milestone in the project life cycle. And finally, the process concludes. This end signifies the termination of the contractual relationship in terms of financial settlements. It's the final step in the contractual journey, marking a clear and definitive closure. From the start of the final stage to the end, each step in this flowchart is designed to ensure a smooth, transparent, and legally sound conclusion to the contract's financial aspects. As we conclude this detailed exploration of the financial settlement process and contracts, especially focusing on Clause 14.12, I want to take a moment to thank you for joining us on this journey. Your support and engagement are what make it possible for us to continue providing educational content like this. But we don't want to stop here. There's so much more we can explore together, so many more contract clauses to decode and understand. And for that, we need your help. If you found this video helpful, informative, and enriching, I have a small request. Could you take a moment to hit the like button? It might seem small, but it makes a huge difference in helping others discover our content. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel. Subscribing not only keeps you updated with our latest videos, but also shows us that you value this kind of content. 
It motivates us to delve deeper and bring even more insightful content to you. Every like, every subscription, every comment you leave, it all contributes to building a community that values learning and understands the complexities of contract management. So, let's keep the conversation going. Subscribe, like, and don't hesitate to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Remember, your support is what fuels this channel. Together, let's demystify more contract clauses and make complex concepts accessible to everyone. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video.